think we're at some winery off of Highway 20 before you get into Clear Lake. And there's the Kia Nero averaging over 50 miles per gallon so far on this trip up to Fort Bragg. It's been a really pleasant ride. A few road noise things, a little engine growl here and there, but just really working very well. Kia Nero plug-in hybrid road trip to test the miles with three adults and all our gear packed in. We traveled from Granite Bay, California, near Folsom Lake, all the way over to the California coast at Fort Bragg, a 552-mile round trip, 14 hours of drive time. And so we've gone 270 miles from Granite Bay over to Fort Bragg. Miles per gallon is 54.5 at the Noyo Harbor Inn, charged up. And so now we're at 20 miles, but we went out and got breakfast. The battery's at 88%. The car was ran really well, very comfortable. I turned off the automatic and went to all hybrid electric at about 13 miles of range because some people said that helped with some of the hills. Um, maybe it did. Um, the adaptive cruise control worked really well. I was at 65 and I got behind a slow Prius and the car slowed down. <laughs> and then I changed lanes in the car and the little Nero sped up to get back to 65. And um, the lane keep assist uh, was is actually so it just it just did a little thing there. It, it it's nice because you don't get as um, see it'll give you a little beep if you if you're not attentive. Um, you don't get as tired. It's just making little minor corrections. It's not overwhelming anything. I did put the car into sport mode once because we missed <laughs> the the exit to Fort Bragg and so we had to go up to Liggett and that was a really windy road. And um, so I put it into sport mode and the, the battery was still charging when I w went down hills. Didn't need it very much. There, I didn't notice a big difference between sport mode and just regular automatic. By the time we did get to Fort Bragg, we had one mile of range left, but we were picking up miles and battery as we would go down hills. Um, all the passengers were very comfortable, uh, plenty of room leave the skylight open, uh, the lights came on automatically as they should, the stereo worked well with the Bluetooth on the phone. I was really comfortable, all things considered, I really didn't have any problems. Where am I supposed to turn? Is it the next one or is this one? Here? Oh yeah, we're going to the state park, we're going to go walk on the beach. And yeah, look at that, look at that nice turning radius. Woo! There was one um, noise, and I was cursing Kia for that noise up coming from up here. I said, geez, what a rattle. <laughs> then I realized I had my sunglasses up there and they were rattling. But the, otherwise, it's been nice and quiet. So now we're going to go for a walk on the beach. Well, no, 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 I'm not going to get my, I'm not going to get Sandy. All right, sounds good. One item that is a Kia issue is this noise with the sunroof. A whistle, uh, even when it is just, you know, broken open and not all the way back, it still kind of whistles. Yeah, kind of a drag, but. That's the way life is. But what I wanted to show is see how bright these were. They, there is an adaptive uh, thing. That I, I think that if you put them on, they're supposed to dim when they see a car coming towards you. Um, I guess I'll just leave them on high and see if that actually works. 
but um, I this is the the light's good. What do you guys think? Oh, I think it's. I mean. Yeah, I. It's I, way ahead. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted the LED lights because I've noticed that my eyes aren't doing as well as I get older, yeah. especially when I'm riding my bike and I go into shadows on a bright day. The the shadows are just dark holes. I mean, I don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> and, uh, whoa. whoa. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going whoa. a little bit faster than I need to. <laughs> no truck There's no truck behind us. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that must be the coffee talking. So right now, that we go down the hill, the engine is off. That is one thing that I have noticed is I can't tell when the engine goes off and when it comes back on. You know, and the, the thing in this area, you have to watch out for deer. Yeah, yeah. So now there is a car behind me. There's supposed to be the automatic dimming feature on the rear view mirror. So if they have their headlights on, it's supposed to dim. And actually, I think that just worked. So it's brighter in my passenger mirror, but not my rear view mirror. Oh, hey, did you see that? The lights just dimmed off. Now let's see if they come back on high. Oh, they do. Wow. And the car is kind of driving itself a little bit here. Oh, good. There's someone slower than me, so I won't feel bad. Yeah, I won't feel pressured. Under pressure. Oh, this is the oh, they're turning. Yeah. Oh, this is the real windy area. So then what I'm going to do is if you can take a picture of the, the, uh, the speedometer thing turned. I put it in a sport. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it got, it got, it got going when I needed it to get going. Very good, Kevin. Yeah, no, I got going when I needed to get going. Oh, my seat's getting warm. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have the heated seats on. <laughs> you thought you just. You thought... <laughs> it, it just kind of. Yeah, it just creeps up on you. Then all of a sudden, your butt's hot. If you push the button, there's three levels. So, Chris, if you can show her with the camera where that is. Yeah, just. Uh, oh. It's down where your left hand is. There should be little lit up lights. If you click on it, it'll oh, go down I one. Don't worry about it. Okay. So. Wait till straight away. Yeah. So, this is actually. Yeah. All the little gadgets and gizmos work. The rear view mirror headlights. Test driving. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's dim in the mirror, so it's not giving me a headache. It is brighter in the side, outside mirror, but you know, you can kind of change that when you need to. So, that's good. I'll put it back in uh, regular mode here. And. Well, the, 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 the display changed. It went back to the normal display. The engine is off, actually. And I'm coasting down the hill, and it's recharging the battery. Now I had to start going again. But So, I mean, you, you, you can't tell when it goes from all electric to the engine running unless you really stomp on it and you hear the, the engine rev up or you put it in sport. So that's half the complaint that people have with the cars that automatically shut down with throwing at a stoplight because for them to get going, the engine has to come back on because they don't have a battery. Uh, so this one can get going even if it has very little battery and then the, the engine just kind of feathers in. So that's oh, kind of nice. So everything they talk about actually works. I'll be darned. Well, we made it back our big road trip from Granite Bay to Fort Bragg. It was a total of 552 miles, 14 hours of drive time, most of which I spent in the driver's seat, and I was very comfortable all the way around. I'm six foot one, 180 pounds, okay, 185, you know, 190 sometimes, um, but it worked for me. It was very comfortable in the driver's seat. I could get a good position with the 
uh, 10 way adjustable seat and everything. And this is the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid EX premium. So there was a lot of um, controls I could use to get myself very comfortable in that driver's seat. I put in 10.4 gallons of gasoline. So when I do the math there, the miles per gallon was 53, but I charged twice. I had a full charge when I left home. I charged up in Fort Bragg twice. And so that made the overall miles per gallon at 57.7. And I could have charged up a third time up in Fort Bragg, but I forgot to, I have it on the schedule charging. So it comes on at midnight to get the lowest rates here at home. And I forgot to hit the little switch. So it never started charging. Um, it was very comfortable for three adults. You saw all the stuff we had in there. Uh, definitely be okay for two little children. And, um, you know, if you had more gear, you could get one of the roof racks up on top. There were lots of bells and whistles. In the first couple weeks, it took me uh, a custom getting used to um, all the little beeps. You, you've gone too far this way, but the lane keep assist really works well. The adaptive cruise control was just wonderful. Again, another item that reduces driver fatigue. So you, you know, you're, you're on the cruise control, you're on I-5 or something like that. And, car, and it just kind of car speeds up, it speeds up. So you just don't have to worry about the throttling back and forth, back and forth. When we got to Fort Bragg, we did some hiking up to the Pygmy Forest. We walked on the beach. We did a rail bike excursion on the old skunk train, and that was fun. I made a video on that. You can check that one out. Um, everything worked as advertised. Matter of fact, we were going up Highway 20, and it was kind of cool, and all of a sudden there was this chime in there, and there like, it was a different chime than, I, than like, you're, not, you're not in the right lane. Um, and it was telling me that the outside temperature had hit 38 degrees, and that the roads may be icy. And then it put a little snowflake icon on there and so it was just another warning and yes there was frost on the side of the roads and it did get cool up there i think probably it was only about 1500 or 1800 uh, feet above sea level um, but just another reminder and they did mention that in the owner's manual which i have read cover to cover multiple times so that was just kind of a nice little added benefit of hey you know it's getting cold watch what's going on all things considered um, my, one of my number one priorities was being comfortable in the car. I don't care if it was an EV or what, if it's not comfortable, I wasn't going to buy it. So this car has given me the comfort. I wanted the next item on my list of priority was to reduce my fossil fuels, uh, intake usage, um, extend miles per gallon. And this car has done that also. If I wanted to look at comparable, more luxury sedans with a little bit more comfort, interior cabin, you know, all the nice stuff. You'd have to, you know, get up to the, the luxury, at least when I was looking for cars that were available in uh, October 2020. You know, the, the European Audi, Volvo, BMWs, or the, the Acuras and Lexus, they were, in, in a plug-in kind of hybrid, were fifteen to $20,000 more for all the same bells and whistles, sunroof and nice stereo sound system, which I don't really care about anyhow. And I just don't see where that extra money is when out the door taxes and license, this was $41,000. That's a lot of money, but it's a lot less than 50 or $60,000. And I do believe at this point in time, with the way this Kia is going, Nero plug-in hybrid EX premium, it's gonna go for many, many years. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it and save a lot of gas. And I'm now ready for an EV. I think I can do it. I, it would have been a challenge to get to Fort Bragg from Granite Bay, all EV. We definitely would have had a to have stopped and, and charged up. And me missing the turn off to Fort Bragg didn't help. <laughs> if I was in an EV, I just would have been pooping my pants on uh, range anxiety. But I think even, even when we got to Fort Bragg, if it, with EV, 
the charge rate at the hotel it was probably about seven kilowatt hours. Uh, seven kilowatt. I mean, that's what I say. Kilo, kilowatt hours. Um, so this got charged up in about two hours and 15 minutes. But obviously, if you had an 80 kilowatt hour battery, it would have taken longer. At the hotel, um, it charged in about the same rate. So overnight, I could have got a full charge on an EV. So I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of there. But look, Kia Nero is going to last for many years before I need an EV. So hopefully, this has helped you in your decision-making process, learn about a subcompact SUV that's out there on the market, the Kia Nero. I think the Kia Nero EV would be really worth looking at, uh, but I'm very happy with the plug-in hybrid. So be safe out there. Take care. I'm Kevin Knauss.